Okay, um, to see what the Voronoi texture does, it's very important to understand how it works behind the scenes. So you start with a bunch of um, feature points, in this case in a two-dimensional plane, but obviously um, you can have it in 3D, 4D, whatever. And then for each point, so not the feature points, but just points on the plane or in space, you look which of the feature points is closest to it. So for example, in the, every point in the orange region is closest to the, uh, the center one right here, while the ones in the purple region are always closest to this one. So if you look here and look at all the other feature points, then this one is going to be the closest. So that's basically what the Voronoi texture does. Um, so when you look at closest, um, there are different definitions for closest, and this is what gives you this, um, these different types of Voronoi patterns. So um, let's go to Blender. So instead of just um, like on Wikipedia where they just show the color for each node, a random color, in Blender you also have the option of the position. So this is going to give you the position of the feature point, so the sort of center of each cell. And then the distance gives you the distance to the feature point. So obviously it's going to be zero at the feature point itself and that's why you get these sort of black dots. So for example if you um, add any less than node like this, you can see that we get circles and they are centered around each feature point. Now for example, if we want these circles to never overlap, there's um, a handy thing that we can use. So we can duplicate this and there's an option here that says N sphere radius. So an N sphere in two dimensions is just a circle, in three dimensions that's a sphere four dimensions you get a hypersphere and so forth. So if we plug this into the threshold value, you can see that they will touch but they will never overlap. So if I set this to something like 10, now you can see that it doesn't work correctly because I have to change the skill here as well. Um, these never overlap and the same in three dimensions. So let's bring this back to four and delete this, and this as well. Um, there are a lot of options, so you can change the dimension here, but nothing really changes there. Then there's also F2. So F1 stands for the closest feature point, and F2 stands for the second closest feature point, which would mean that instead of taking, for example, here this one because this is closest, you take the one which is second closest, so in the, that might be, I'm not really sure, that might be this one or something like that. And then you get a pattern like this. Now, um, another thing we can choose is smooth F1. So it's going to sort of blur out um, the sharper edges, just like that. You can create this to create, uh, you can use this to create rounded edges if you're creating stones or something. There's like a nice example on the wiki or on the doc, or the Blender documentation. So right here, like that. Um, okay, so I said something about it depends on what you define as closest. So for example, in Wikipedia, they explain here, this is a thing called the P norm or a distance basically. And what it does is you take each of, so you have a vector. So in two dimensions, that's just an X and a Y coordinate. In three dimensions, that's X, Y, and Z. And then in the n, n dimensions, that's x1, x2, x3, up to xn. Take the absolute value and then raise it to the power p. So this is the exponent. And then you take the p root or the, well, raise it to the power 1 divided by p. So if p is equal to 2, then this is just our normal distance that we're used to. Square everything and then take the square root. Add it together and take the square root. So that's the Euclidean distance because um, 
that's how the Greeks, the distance the Greeks used and that we're used to using, but there are other distances that you can use. So maybe important thing to note is um, this exponent has to go away when you, p becomes less than one, because otherwise you don't have a distance. So if you look at the utility and distance, which is the one we already had here, we could just get circles, right? Let me add a less than node. Um, sorry. Uh, there we go. Less than. Move it somewhere here. So you can see that these are all circles. Now what happens if we, for example, use the Manhattan? Well, in Manhattan, New York, all the streets are like square, right? And so if you want to go from one point to the other, you always have to travel along the grid lines of how the city is laid out. And that's basically the reason for the naming of Manhattan distance. And the distance there is for P is equal to one. So you're just adding up the uh, absolute values of the components and then you get this um, rhombus like shape, as you can see. And the Chevy Chef is the one where instead of taking um, it to any power, you take it to sort of the infinite power. Well, it's not really possible, but what happens is you just take the maximum. And what you get is a square. So if you look right here, you can see that we just get squares. And then the final one here, Minkowski, is just a generalization of these, and it gets it lets you choose the exponent. So let's plug this into here. So currently it's set to two, which is the Euclidean distance. So we get circles. If I set it to one, we're going to get. Um, oh, sorry, not here. If I set this to one, we get. Um, the rhombi or rhombus and then if I set it to something very big like the exponent maybe to 30 we get the squares not exactly yet but if I keep increasing this it's going to become a better approximation for the Chevy Chef you should never try to do it like that just use the Chevy Chef because um, for example if I set to 100 there might already be rounding errors so you can avoid it why do you need this? Well, let's say you want to make um, an asteroid-like shape. You can set it to something like 0 0.6, and then you get something like this. So it's sort of like an interpolation between these three. So for one, we get the rhombus, and then for two, we're going to get the circle, and then it slowly transitions to a square. So you can see we get sort of square with rounded corners. Okay. Then there's one final option here that I haven't talked about. This is the distance to edge. And what that does is exactly what it says. It gives you the distance to the edge. So for example, this is the edge and you can see it's black. That means the distance to that edge is zero, which is obvious. And as you get closer and closer, uh, farther away from the edge, the value increases, becomes more white, which means the value gets bigger. And, um, it gives you the distance to the closest edge. So right here, it's not going to give you the distance to this edge, but the distance to this edge because it's closer. And that's why you get this sort of um, rough edges. I use. I think this used to be called crackle before, but I like that they changed the name because it actually says what it does. So yeah, that's the Voronoi texture.